Okay, um, just want to get started here. Um, this weekend, uh, our team um, voted on captains, and um, you know the team selected uh, seven guys as their captain: uh, Jordan Fuller, Jonathan Cooper, J.K. Dobbins, Chase Young, Tough Borland, C.J. Saunders, and K.J. Hill. Uh, I think that they are a great representation of the program. Uh, they are uh, a group of guys that I think um, epitomizes what we want an Ohio State football player to be. I think they understand uh, what it means uh, to be a captain and uh, very, very well respected. Unbelievable group of guys. Uh, really cool. A couple of two-time guys in there. And then also, um, what a great story for C.J. Saunders, somebody who comes in as a walk-on, earns a scholarship, and now uh, is captain. So uh, I know it was a lifelong dream for him and uh, really proud for him and some of the other guys. So um, those will be our captains this year. Uh, also, um, you know, we've decided to, to name Justin the starter for the uh, the first game against uh, Florida Atlantic. Um, you know, I think all quarterbacks have done a good job this camp. Um, you know, I, I met with those guys and told them that all that really means is that Justin will be taking the first nap uh, on Saturday. And then where it goes from there, who knows? Um, you know, the stories of the national championship team and three quarterbacks playing, everybody has to be ready to go. Uh, all guys had good camps, but, but uh, Justin kind of separated himself the last week. Um, so he'll be our starter. Uh, so with that, I'll take any questions. We will open up, uh, second row left. <clears throat> hey, Ryan, is there any particular reason why you don't you didn't name a starter and just keep it as this is our guy? I mean, what what was the thought process behind that? Well, I, I think any time um, you know, you're naming a starter, uh, they have to earn it. Um, and how do you earn it? You, know, you earn it by playing. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to earn a job in, in uh, you know, 15 practices in the spring and then Walking into preseason camp, uh, you don't just give somebody a job. Uh, never believed in that, never will. Uh, you have to earn it. And, you know, it, it's hard at quarterback. You need reps to really show what you can do. And, and I think coming out of the spring, uh, Justin had a good feel for the offense, but certainly was nowhere near ready to be the starter for this offense. I would say after the first week, he really wasn't there. Uh, made some mistakes, turned the ball over. And I think just now he, he's starting to scratch the surface. I still don't think he's where he needs to be, but. Um, after this last week, I do feel like he's played at a starter level, and, and I think he's earned the job. Um, and we'll see where it goes from there. Hey, Ryan, when you first took this job, one of the first things you did was get Justin. And all the things that occurred after that, you know, transfers that ensued, the off season, this competition, when you made that decision, I'm assuming that you knew that a lot of that stuff could happen. Where we are today right now is your plan and that decision, in your opinion, working? the way you wanted it to. Yeah, I can't sit here and say that uh, there was one plan. Um, once Dwayne decided to enter the draft, uh, everything went into a tailspin, really, to be honest with you. Um, that was a very tough situation. You know, you're talking about somebody who had three years left. He comes for one year and leaves. Uh, that affects recruiting, and, and it's obviously a very sensitive position. And then the opportunity to go get Justin. Uh, we knew who he was in recruiting, uh, had a relationship with he and his, he and his dad, and and his high school coach, and, and, and so when he became available and, and those conversations were had, we felt like it was a great fit. Um, and so uh, then from there, you know, a lot transpired since then. And, and we tried to done the, do the best we could to, you know, put that room together and piece it together. And a very unique time and place in college football is the quarterback position. And especially when you have somebody uh, as highly touted as Dwayne leave in, after his sophomore year, it makes it hard, and uh, I think we've done an unbelievable job of you know putting that room together in short order. Um, you know where it goes and the production we get out of the out of the unit will be yet to be seen. But uh, I feel strong right now. But um, you know we'll see as it goes on. Where do you stand in terms of these two as as backups? Um, you know, as you go forward, obviously with Justin, mobile quarterback, how much are you willing to to run him? Kind of how is that situation given? You know, the, the room maybe doesn't have as much depth as, as you thought you may in the spring. Uh, well, I think that um, Gunner and and uh, Chris both bring, um, you know, good good skill packages to the table. They both are accurate throwing the ball, good 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 feel for anticipation and touch. Um, you know, a little bit more athletic than you think they are. So, um, like we've done in the past, you know, we put the whole offense in, and then based on what the quarterback can do, uh, we'll tailor it to what his skill set is, just like we did with JT and um, we did with Dwayne. <clears throat> Joe Burrow when he was in there. Um, and now we'll do the same thing with these guys. And so uh, we'll let those guys keep learning the offense. You know, Gunner's really only been in the, I guess we're at practice 14 or 15. He's only been in the offense really, um, you know, 15 practices. And so really he's at where Justin was coming out of the spring. And so he'll keep growing uh, day in and day out. And 
Um, you know, they'll keep working, and, and as we get closer to the game, we'll decide, you know, if Justin were to come out of the game, who would go in next. But they're both working hard and uh, improving every day. But, but we'll kind of put those packages together as we get closer to, to the game. Does tailoring and offense become more difficult as you get into the season? You do need to go to a different skill set? Not, not if you're organized. Yeah, not if you're organized. I think if you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants a little bit, yeah, yeah, you can get disorganized quickly. But if you can put a package together that best fits what they do, and you just practice those type of packages, then I think it's easier. Yeah, right. You remember way back when, when you were named starting quarterback uh, at New Hampshire? <laughs> what, what did it do for you from a uh, confidence standpoint, from a weight off your back standpoint? I mean, what, what changed, you know, just a little bit mentally about you from that moment on? Uh, it gave me confidence. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, when, when you go into that first game, you're not sure what to expect. Um, and you really don't know until somebody plays. And, um, you know, I just I tried to go back on my experiences when I played and, and trust in my training and trust in my coaching and that as long as I took care of the ball, uh, everything would take care of itself. And it did. Um, but you can't try to do too much. You can't try to prove too much, you know, and, and that'll be our next conversation uh, when I sit down with Justin is that, you know, you can't go out and try to be, you know, uh, what Dwayne was in game one. You can't try to be what JT Barrett or Braxton Miller was. You, you, you have to be you. You got to take care of the ball. You got a good defense. You got a really good special teams and a good group around you. Just play within yourself and take care of the football. Now with Justin driving the bus, so to speak, or at least to start driving the bus, what, without giving away secrets, I know you won't do this, but what, what's going to be a little bit different about this offense, do you think, compared to a year ago? What, what should people anticipate seeing? Uh, no, I mean, it's, it's going to be very, very similar. Um, you know, his skill set is, is, you know, he has a lot of different things that Dwayne had. Um, He's, he's a little bit more athletic um, and faster and stronger and run you know he can run um, but it'll be very similar uh, we'll, you know we'll see the same type of plays you know we're always not all of a sudden going to go drastically different um, you know we, we'll probably emphasize some different packages with him but for the most part it'll still be the Ohio State offense Ryan when you talk about Justin earning that, that first opportunity it seems like it might be hard to kind of quantify exactly what that means for everybody how how when why does that happen? And is it just a feeling? Is it a number that you used? How did you come to that conclusion that he had done that? Well, you have to prove to your teammates and to the coaches that you're worthy of being a starter. Um, and a lot comes with that. Uh, leadership, ability to control the offense, making checks up front, uh, protection uh, checks, uh, making good reads in a run game, uh, locating the football, take care of the football. Uh, it's not just going out there playing. It's moving the football down the, uh, down the field. And um, you know, we even in the two scrimmages we had, we had champions just like we typically do during the season. You know, he graded out a champion in this last this last scrimmage. Um, you know, played really really well. So you know that that's what it is. You know, and you, you can see when the guys are around in the huddle and, and there's a confidence about him and he's moving the ball down the field and his completion percentage at a certain point. Um, you know, that's how you earn a starting job. And how did he uh, take the news? I mean, he seems like he's been open to this idea of the competition all along. If it's now over that he gets to take that first snap, how did he respond? What are the conversations like for the two of you now moving forward? Uh, yeah, just you know, like you know, as you get to know Justin, he kind of takes it all in stride. You know, he doesn't get too high, too low. Um, I think he knows it's an opportunity, and and now he's got to go run with it. And um, so I, you know, I think he envisioned himself being the starter, and now he's got to go run with it. Ryan, you talked, uh, I think last week when you said that you thought Justin was coming off a good practice, that he was doing a better job throwing the ball on time. Um, is that with him just an experience thing with the guys he's working with? Is there something mechanical you had to work on with him there just to make sure he was getting the ball where he needs to be on time? I think it's a little bit of everything. I think that his uh, his reads and his eyes have been much better where he's going with the football. His timing, his understanding of the offense, the more reps he gets. I also think that he, he's getting a better feel for throwing in the pocket. Um, you know, mechanically, there are a few things that, that Coach Yersich has worked on and that Justin's worked on that, that's really cleaned up a few of his throws. Um, you know, he's got a strong arm, and, you know, he's done a pretty good job with his accuracy in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, he, he can create. He's very athletic, and he can create. So when he does create, he has to know when there's times to take a chance and when there's times he's got to throw it away or even eat it. And, and that's just managing the game, maturity in that position. And uh, have you uh, decided on the starter at right tackle as well? No, those guys are still battling it out. Um, they're doing a great job. I, I anticipate both will play. Um, you know, Brandon Bowen's probably had the best camp that I've uh, I've seen him play. You know, he's at a certain level right now. I think he's playing really, really well. And Nick's done a really good job as well. I think right now uh, they both des you know deserve to play. 
um, you know, where this week goes, we'll see. This is still another big week for us, you know, as we lead into next week and prepare for the game. Justin's coming in as obviously a very highly rated recruit where he was a year ago. The expectations here are so high, yet he's only been in the program a short time. How do you kind of manage? What is, what's realistic for him, the expectations for him this year? Yeah, that's, well, that, that, that's, that's hard. That's hard. And, you know, when you say it like that, it's, um, you know, makes you think because you're right. He just got here and the expectations are almost ridiculous. But, um, you know, that's the same thing as being the head coach at Ohio State. That's, you know, that's what you signed up for. And we're here for a reason. And so if you get caught up in those type of things, you get yourself all jammed up. And, you know, I think that he understands that. Um, I think he always, again, envisioned himself at a school where he's going to be in a high-profile position. Um, you know, he's if he was on that, that QB1 show, you know, he's been a high-profile recruit. So I think he understands what the limelight means. So um, I think he's always prepared himself for that. I don't think this is something that just come on hit on him you know, in the last uh, couple months. I think he's always be ready for the spotlight. Um, now, how he handles it, we'll see. And um, listen, it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be mistakes along the way, and the only way you grow is by, by failing. And, and I mentioned that before, is Dwayne had the opportunity to come in against Illinois, to come in against UNLV, throws a pick six, makes a bunch of mistakes, but it was in mop-up time, nobody was noticing. And Justin doesn't have that luxury. So um, we're going to have to uh, manage those situations the best we can and, and uh, just support him the best we can and move forward. I'm sure that you're really excited about his potential. You've seen his talent, but also concerned about the lack of experience. Which is kind of winning out in your mind? Are you more excited about the, the ceiling, um, how high that ceiling can be? I am. Yeah, very, very excited. Front row left, Doug. Uh, when we talk about Justin's experience, what he did at Georgia last year, the time he had there, how different did that make him than a guy coming out of high school when he got here? Is, it, is there some value in that, or is it a different system? It's a different school. It, you felt like he was a freshman. Yeah, uh, another great question. Because uh, I went home the other night, and there was a, um SEC game on. It was Auburn, Georgia. I think it was at Georgia. And I just happened to click it on and start watching it. And not, uh, the quarterback for Georgia was Justin Fields. It just caught me off guard. That you know He's taken snaps in SEC games and SEC environments. So um, I slept a little better that night. Because um, he caught the snap and um, he didn't turn the ball over, so that was good. <laughs> that was one in the books. Um, but that's very, very different than you know running a team, managing a team, operating a team. But but the good news is he has played in those environments. And anytime you've taken a snap in those environments, you know you've uh, you've experienced what it means to play in big time college football and atmosphere. So um, a little bit of both, I think. He, you know, at least he's got a little bit of a feel for it. But at the same time, you know, managing a game, making great decisions, playing situational football. Uh, making decisions and taking care of the ball and putting the team in front of yourself, all those things are going to be critical. With generally, your general philosophy with a quarterback who does have running ability, how, what's your comfort level in how many times you want him running the ball in a game, either on called runs or on scrambles, and how comfortable are you with him taking hits in the course of a game? Yeah, I'm not comfortable with him taking a lot of hits in the course of a game, for sure. Um, and I think that um, those are all things that are going to be really um, you know, calculated, you know, down to the last, um, you know, carry because, you know, like you said, um, because he has such a great skill set, you know, you could, you can do a lot of things with him. So we have to be smart with that. Uh, I think the type of runs and the type of ways that he runs with the football um, are different. You know, there's certain heavy, heavy runs where he's going to have to go in there and take shots from linebackers. And there's other ones where maybe he's, you know, squirting out to the sideline and gets stepping out of bounds. There's going to be times where he has to learn how to run too, you know, where he has to get down. And um, you know, I thought Kyler Murray did a great job of that last year. You saw him kind of squirt out for seven yards, slide, get out of there, and he's okay. But there's other times where we're down in the red zone, he's going to have to probably lower his shoulder and, and, and run run the ball well. But I think uh, those that's all part of the plan here in, in figuring that out for him. Um, but you know, obviously, don't want to put him at risk. And is there any recap generally from the scrimmage that you can j give just of guys who look good this past weekend, or just? What, what you um, like? You know, we had out. probably, I think, probably about 10 to 12 champions on both sides of the ball. Um, I thought guys came out and played really, really well. Um, uh, and nothing in particular in terms of like individuals that, that really, you know, uh, stepped up that maybe hadn't before without, you know, selling somebody short. Um, but it was overall it was a good scrimmage. I think the offense and the defense have been getting after each other. Um, it's been a lot of give and take, which has been great. Um, I, I will say on offense, I think that uh, J.K. Dobbins has really run hard in this camp. He, he's got his pads down. He's playing with speed. I think that's significant. Um, 
I think that on defense, we, we are running to the ball. We're creating turnovers. The, the secondary is playing with energy. The defensive line's penetrating. You know, I could feel that. Um, and they're playing with great energy. So uh, overall, I think we got that accomplished. Uh, we're still working to get tough. Uh, that's, that's, that's a daily process is being tough. And, uh, but I think we got that done in camp. We got tougher, but we're not where we need to be yet. Quarterbacks all know about your decision. Did you sit down with me with them like last Yeah, I met with today? them individually last week uh, a little bit, just talked about where we were and, and then met with them as a group. Was that today or yesterday? Uh, so I met with them individually last week and then met with them uh, today as a group. And what, what message did you kind of convey to them? No, just that uh, all this means is that Justin's taking the first nap in, in, in the Florida Atlantic game. And that, uh, like I said, you know, in the national championship game, all, all three guys had to play. We're going to need guys. Guys have to prepare to be ready to go. Uh, if Justin doesn't, uh, you know, do what he's supposed to do, then, then someone else is going to have an opportunity. So um, that's all that means right now. But, but that he earned it, he deserves it, and, um, you know, we're all going to support him. Right, that's what we were saying before. I, I don't really – think that we have uh, a backup yet again because I think that really Gunner only has 15 you know practices under his belt so he's still working on trying to see what he's capable of I think even in another another two weeks I think we'll get a better feel for where he is just like again the first week of preseason camp you know Justin didn't practice that well you know so that's what practice 16 through 20 something you know and that's not a lot of practices that's not a lot of reps and so, you know, Gunner's flashed at times, but then also he's still learning everything. And anytime you're doing something where you're learning it for the first time, it's hard. Um, so, you know, I'll expect those guys to continue to, uh, to compete against each other. Front row middle, Dave. Ryan, we talked a lot about uh, backup running backs so far during camp. Um, if you guys had a game later today, who would be your, your number two tailback? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, DeMario um, has had a good camp. He's done some really good things. Um, you know, I think he can really be a weapon for us. Uh, Master has practiced a couple of days, and, and when he has, he's looked good. But uh, he's been limited uh, all camp, uh, which is which is hard. I know, frustrating for him. Uh, and then the two freshmen have been running hard, so I think you, there's a chance you could see them all play right now. Um, I, I'd say maybe Demario ha has the, the leg up on those other guys right now, um, but they'll continue to work today. I thought Demario ran better today, um, and uh, he's, he's, overall, he's doing a good job. Bill asked you about right tackle, and that's still kind of up for grabs. You said both guys might play. Is there any other position that's still a little bit up for grabs as far as, far as who's going to start? Maybe you could have a rotation at, at a certain spot. Um, I, I think I think we could see a lot of the offensive linemen play. Um, you know, towards the end of the week, probably have a better idea who those are. But um, but we're going to try to play depth there. Uh, we're going to try to play depth at a lot of positions. And so, the more depth we can play with, the better off and stronger our team is going to be. And um, so. You know, probably by the end of the week, we'll have a better idea of where that is and, and you know, who really can we say should play in a game. Um, if they deserve to play in a game, we're going to play them at all positions. Uh, third row left, Dan. Ryan, I know you had said a couple of weeks ago that you kind of thought like four or five was an ideal number for captains. What made you decide to ultimately name seven captains? Yeah, I just took a look at the, the way the vote came in. And, uh, you know, it was pretty strong for these seven guys. And then there was kind of a gap uh, between seven and then eight, nine, and ten. And um, I thought... All were deserving. Uh, I thought it was a good mix of offense and defense, and we had seven last year, so I, th I thought that was a good fit. CJ, in particular, when you have a guy who goes from you know being a walk-on to being a captain, you know, what kind of example do you think that sets for the rest of the team? Oh, I think it's unbelievable because you can tell that uh, these guys respect hard work. Um, they respect and um, really give a lot of credit to the way he's gone about his work every day, the way he handles himself, his character. Uh, because CJ hasn't played a whole bunch around here. But uh, what matters is how he works in a weight room every day, the way he practices, the way he handles himself off the field and the, the classroom. And it says a lot about our team is that they voted him a captain. Uh, but that's, that's all the guys here. You know, take a guy like Jonathan Cooper. He, all he does is everything the right way. And uh, I'm really proud of him. And, and, you know, he was just raised the right way. He comes to work every day. He's got a smile on his face. He, he's tough. And uh, he'll be a great captain as well. Where is CJ at in that competition for playing time right now? Slot receiver spot. Yeah, right now he's at the H. Uh, he's he's backed up uh, or backing up uh, KJ. You know, Jalen Gill's in the mix right there, and uh, he's had a good camp. You know, he's a little bit of a situational guy. He's going to help us on special teams. He helped us in the past game a bunch. Um, you know, but he's he's tough and uh, he's got really great short area quickness and good hands. And I'm um, glad we got him. Far left, Coach, will you ever be a guy that 
guy that names a starting quarterback from more than just a single game, or is that due to the way that this situation is playing out? And how does that jive with your philosophy of not having a player be afraid to make mistakes? Yeah, so I think like if, if Dwayne was coming back next year, I mean, you'd say he's the starter and until he loses the job. Um, I think when you're, when you're talking about a first-time starter, I think uh, you know, it's dangerous to start saying if he does this or if he does that, you just got to go and play and take care of the ball and, uh, and then we'll kind of take it from there. But, you know, again, it was the same situation as we were in last year. Um, you know, when we, it was kind of Dwayne and Joe and, and Dwayne was ahead of Joe and, and that was tough. We had to kind of make that call. And then, and then Dwayne had to beat out Tate last preseason and, and we went with Dwayne and it kind of, you know, went from there. But, but it's like anything else. I mean, any other position. If, if guys don't produce, it's a performance game. Then, then you got to go from there. But um, you know, when you name a starter, you try not to think about those things. You try to just think about, you know, playing with confidence and being productive, and um, you know, try to think positively that way. How realistic would it be, given their inexperience, for Chris or Gunner to overtake Justin by a week two or a week three? Or it just depends on how he plays. Yeah, depends on how he plays. You know, not trying to create a quarterback controversy at all. Trying to just let him play, but, but again, you just don't know. Um, you know what happens if he rolls his ankle in the second play? Yeah, heaven forbid. But those things happen, and so you have to be ready. And so we'll just take it one play at a time, one week at a time, and, and let it build from there. Curious how you delivered the news to the captains, and what was CJ's response? Uh, yeah, we did it this morning um, in an eight o'clock meeting. Um, brought about the team in and. Um, let them know the, the results of, of the voting and uh, called all seven guys up here and congratulated the team. They did an unbelievable job selecting. Um, I talked to them before about what it means to be an Ohio State captain, uh, the, the, the tradition that comes with it and the guys that have come before them. But then also that you know, you're not voting for your best friend or your buddy. You're voting for someone that's going to represent the school and someone that you respect. And I thought they did a great job. And so, yeah, I brought all seven guys up and um, you know, congratulated them, and I think they were all proud. Yeah, Coach, obviously you had seen a lot of tape on Justin before he came here, but obviously you hadn't worked with him, so you probably weren't keenly aware of his personality. When you're factoring in whether he's going to be a starter, how much of it is his skill level? How much of it is his, you know, the intangibles, the personality, the leadership? Yeah, I, I don't know if you can put a number on any of what you just said, but uh, you know when you see it. And, um, you know, the more you're around quarterbacks and the more you've seen different guys, you start to realize everybody has their own style, their own personality, their own leadership. Um, their own skill set. And so, you know, he brings a unique skill set. Um, I think he does have leadership skills. I think when you walk in, um, you know, it's hard to just kind of bang the door down, especially in a program like this where there's unbelievable guys who put in years worth of work. But um, I think, you know, day in and day out, what he's doing, he's earning the respect of the guys around him. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll be shocked if he's not a strong leader for us by the end of the season. Is, is it harder to project what uh, a player is going to be like as a leader, say two or three games in, than, than what he'll be as a quarterback or anymore? Well, I think you see the traits, you know, and I think with confidence you start to see it. I think if guys are uncomfortable challenging their teammates or uh, don't do well in front of a group or can't take, um, can't take command of, of a group of guys, uh, that's usually a bad sign. Um, I've seen that with Justin. I've seen him take control. I've seen him challenge guys. I've seen him go talk, put his arm around guys. You know, I've kind of seen those different uh, qualities about him. And so when you see those qualities and with a little bit of confidence, then typically that's going to go like this. If guys struggle with that, then, then it's usually hard. Coach, we have time for just a couple more over to the right, Tony. Ryan, do you know where your coaches are going to be stationed on game day? Yeah, we're working through that. I think that um, as of right now on offense, Kevin and, and uh, Mike will be upstairs. Um, you know, on defense, we're still working through that. I know Jeff wants to be upstairs, whether uh, Matt Barnes is up, upstairs or not. We're still figuring, figuring that out. We did have a mock game last week. And, uh, kind of went through that a little bit and had Matt upstairs and uh, with the special teams, you know, kind of work through that a little bit. Um, you know, I'm kind of very much involved now with the special team, so I'm going to be able to help a little bit. But uh, calling plays, it's going to be hard for me to do a lot of it. So we're kind of those are the things that we're working through, and we'll do another mock game this week and probably make a final decision on Saturday. And then you guys led the nation in penalties last year. How much of that has been a focus? Huge. So anytime somebody false starts or has a penalty now, they just do a lap. We just stop practice right then and there, and they just do a lap. And uh, it may not seem like a big thing, but they don't. They kind of miss the whole period, and so it matters now. And um, I thought so far in camp we've done a pretty good job because a lot of them were the false starts, um, amazingly, and, and some of them were holding. And I know there were other penalties along the way, but if we can just cut down 
on those, you know, non-talent ones where, you know, it's just false starts or, um, you know, uh, procedures or, you know, illegal motions or any of the pre-snap stuff that's just a matter of us uh, staying disciplined, then, then we'll be fine. Uh, because the, the effort stuff, you know, sometimes there'll be a holding or maybe a late hit or something like that because you're giving effort. That's one thing. But the procedural stuff, we've got to put an end to. So that's been the emphasis in preseason. All right, last, last question. Rob, you like your quarterbacks ultra competitive. I'm just curious how the two non-starters took the news. Did you deliver it today? It was the final. You met with them last week, but today I assume they got the news. Yeah. And was it we saw this coming, or was it like could you sense that they were ticked off about it because they are competitive? How did that come? A little bit of both. I think I think you know they they've seen Justin maybe pull away a little bit, but at the same time I know that they're they're competitive and they're prideful and they want to play. So I thought that was good, and we'll see how they respond tomorrow. And in terms of just the big plan, you, you've been saying that the, the J.K. needs to really get it going early. Do you break the season down into kind of increments, three games, uh, in terms of we're going to do this here until they get their feet wet a little more? And then how does that play out? Is there a big picture or specific, or you kind of live in the present moment? No, yeah, you got to live in the present. But I think I think that the, the first six games to me is, is a chunk right there. Then you have the bye week. Then you have those two games in the middle. And then you end with the last four games. So I do kind of look at it that way a little bit. I mean, clearly you can't look ahead or anything like that. But just that's what we're dealing with. You know, we're dealing with a six-week kind of season right there. We come up for air, two games, um, you know, going to Northwestern, having Wisconsin at home. Then you got the bye week, and then you got the stretch, you know, down in November. So kind of look at it like that. But at the same time, you just got to be 1-0 on Saturday. But the game plan could actually, in those increments, could change. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Shoot, we, we may look different in week two than we look in week one and vice versa and depends on if they work <laughs> if, they, if they work we'll keep going if they don't have to change them so did everybody get through the last week healthy i mean have you lost anybody or anything again not you know i think that the policy is going to be not to talk about injuries but i've been really pleased with that you know again knock on wood so far this this camp's been great yeah.